Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode and the first episode of the year for Creatives Ignite. I'm here with who I like to be the first guest every year. It's been the, I don't know, like three years you've been the first guest, I think, every year. I think so, yeah. Anyway, um, and this is year 11 for the podcast. So, yeah, I guess we just stop counting until I get to 20 and then we'll celebrate again. Um, <laughs> But we're going to talk about, I don't know if you guys are like this as well, um, but I know Mario and I have talked about this. At the end of the year, we kind of get reflective. And then at the beginning of the year, sometimes it can be kind of depressing a little bit because you've looked back and maybe you didn't hit your goals or you aren't where you want to be or you it's just cold and rainy and frozen like Tate says in North Dakota that it maybe not like that in Hawaii, but um, it's, it's just, I don't know, bleak sometimes. And so I consider, I don't know why May is considered mental health month, like for the United States, but I think it should be January. So I make it January in for the podcast. So this whole month where we will be discussing things around mental health and what better than all the pressure we put on ourselves at the beginning of the year. Right. Right. So um, tell everybody who you are quickly <clears throat> and then, and where you are and what you do. And then we'll dive right into the questions. Sure. 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 Um, my name is Mario. I currently live in Hawaii. <clears throat> I'm on the Island of Oahu and um, I am a brand strategist. Um, I'm a personal brand coach and strategist um, content. Uh, creator uh, and uh, mindset coach. Um, and I've also done a lot of uh, discipling and mentoring of, of young adults um, for over 20 years. So that's me. I've been designing for over 25 years too. So uh, even though I look 20 years older than Diane, we're actually Diane's I'm older than old, you. Older than me. Yes. That's right. I'm two years older than you, right? Um, I think just one. Yeah, but you'll never catch up to me. Like I'm well, over 13 I don't think, months. I don't think anybody's ever going to catch up to anybody who's older than them. <laughs> anyway, but sometimes people who are just one year older, they are the same age for, you know, two months or something. Yeah. I don't, I don't think we ever No. Who cares about that? Really? I mean, <laughs> um, so, um, we're diving into, this and I want to end like start the thing of how you ended last year. So if um if you're thinking about what you do in December, um do you have any yearly practices? Maybe you do multiple things quarterly and you're real organized or whatever. But um yeah that's right. If somebody dies I can catch up. That's right. Absolutely Barry. I love that. He's always thinking positive and another problem solver. I love that. That's hilarious. Sure. Okay. So at the are there any yearly practices you do for your business at the end of the year or at the beginning of the year, or do you do them all throughout? I do both. Um, and I separate them. That, that may not be like the best thing. Um, I definitely separate my previous year practice from my um, next year practice. Uh, and the end of the year for us is, is really just jam packed from literally from Thanksgiving to uh, just after New Year's, there's like birthdays and holidays and celebrations and just nonstop um, things happening. So I I take a practice of just reflecting on. Uh, for me, we've talked about this a lot, but uh, I'm Christian and and I reflect on all the stuff that God did that year. So um, whether it's business stuff or fulfilling promises that he made to us or um, the vision that I had at the beginning of the year, measuring it against what actually happened um, through the end of the year. Um, and uh, so just really a reflective practice at the end of the year, um, looking back at all the things that happened um, and yeah, you know, whatever mistakes were made or whatever I think I could have done better, I just assess. Um, and I don't really, I don't really um, vision cast or plan for the next year because I set that time aside at the beginning of the year. Um, and so through the, through the end of the year, like, somewhere after my birthday, which is the end of November, uh, in the mid part of December, I'll, I'll just kind of set some time upside 
to reflect and go over and look at my journals and look at look over the work that I've done and look at look at the things that have transpired that year and and just kind of reflect on it and think about it and for me I I just have a, a heart of gratitude and um, thankfulness of of all the hard things and the good things and the and the bad things and the and the amazing things that happened in the year because through that all I know that I've grown and even though. Yes, Jen, even the rat killing, um, which is especially hard this year because there's a rat happening in my house at that time too. So there was just a lot of turmoil. Um, but thank you for reminding me that of that wonderful, wonderful memory. Um, and uh, it's really a practice of, of looking back to be grateful. And then uh, at the beginning of the year- Wait, my- wait, wait. I have a question. In that reflection- sure, sure, sure. Are you writing? Are you recording audibly? Are you just walking? Do you, is it just a, a thinking you set aside extra time to think? It's, it's reading over because I, I, I journal and I, I document a lot of stuff during the year, whether it's content or whether it's just me journaling or taking notes or, so I'll look back at all the stuff. I'll look back at the breadth of the work that was done. I'll look back at um, the things that my family has gone through, the the joys and the, the ups and the downs. Um, and I'll read journals really is, is what I'm doing, um, reading and, and looking back. I'm not, I'm not really, um, I'm not taking that and then creating something new from it. I'm just, I'm just remembering and reflecting and looking back and thinking and, and, and I'm, I'm in, I'm in a, 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 you know, attitude of prayer or meditation a lot of times. So I'm just, it, it's really internal. Uh, there's no real external practice there um, unless I'm driven to, you know, a, an actual external mode of gratification and or gratitude. And then I'm writing down, you know, I'm thanking God for all the wonderful things that have happened that year. Um, so that, that's, that's mainly, as far as like me doing anything out else outside of the reflection part, um, you know, that's, that's really my practice in that's in that state. Um, and then, you know, I'll look at, I'll look at, you know, I, I won't dwell too much on it, but it's really about like, I'm looking at numbers and I'm looking at like, okay, how much money did we do? Did I, did I do this year? Or how many clients did I have? And how many, how many lives did I, where was I able to um, interface with and, and, and help and how many people were, was I able to help that year? So those are, those are the things, those are the numbers that I'm really looking at. Okay. So then at the, at what practices at the beginning of the year? So at the beginning of the year, so the reason I, I wait to like the, after the beginning of the year, my, my anniversary is on the 4th of January. So I, like I said, it's really the kind of jam packed from, from Thanksgiving to the 4th of January. So I don't really start anything until then. Um, what's been my practice the last, I want to say three years, um, because it's really, really caused a shift in how I, how I start my year. Um, I will do, um, I'll do a yearly fast, like a, I'll fast from, from food. So I'll do a liquid fast. Um, you drink for- smoothies or no, it's just water. No, it, it's not. It's not smooth. It's more it, it, not smooth. Like I have a like a like a protein shake, which is mm-hmm. just protein and water. Um, but I won't put any like solid stuff in it. I'll, I'll just kind of just. It's it's mostly like I'll have one protein shake a day, and then I'll have mostly water or um, nothing really with a lot of sugar in it or anything like that. It's just mostly clear stuff, teas and coffee and stuff. And so I'll do that for anywhere between uh, this year. I did it for four days, and then last year I did it for six days. Um, and I'm I'm in that time. I'm really just waiting, and I'm listening, and I'm 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 asking God to give me vision for the year. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm really contemplating. I'm not I'm not really thinking about too much of what happened last year, except to. Um, think about the the promises that he fulfilled through the year. Mm -hmm. And then I'm looking to to this next year and saying, okay, Lord, what do you want? What do you want to happen? What are you showing me this year? Where do you want us to go and give me some kind of a word or, 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 or um, uh, what's the, what's the, you know, what's the directive this year that you want me to, to really focus on um, in, in my personal life. And that really all always trickles down from it's from me to then to my family, then to business and relationships and that stuff like that. So um, that's, that's what I do. And so I I'm, I'm with a journal, I'm praying, I'm, I'm meditating. I'm, I'm not thinking about strategy of business. I'm not thinking of all that stuff. I'm waiting on God to tell me like, okay, where are we going this year? And 
what are you go, what what are you going to show me this year and where are you going to take me and and how is it going to be um and so for instance last year um i got a really vivid vision about the 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 hardness of the year that the year was going to be really really difficult and that's not something i wanted to hear at the beginning of the year um i i, I so i i had this i had this um just kind of uh vision that the 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 year was going to be hard and that i needed to kind of restore foundations and and get back to basics and then through the course of the end of the year things would start changing and transforming um and that's exactly what happened which is really kind of mind blowing to me but this year um was different so um have you ever had a year where it was the same kind of word or the same um, like multiple years in a row. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, a few years back, uh, I was really, um, I was really searching God and asking him like what I should even be doing. Right. So am I doing this design stuff? Am I doing, am I going to, am I going to be a pastor? Am I going to be uh, something completely else? And so um, every year, I think it was like two or three years, he, he just kind of kept uh, pressing in on me and saying, um, um, be where you are basically and, and, and be who you are, where you are. And that's all he would tell me. So and so, yeah. For anybody who's not, um, who's like, I don't know this woo woo <laughs> stuff he's talking about. He's telling you, yeah. I just want to ask this question. Um, sure. Is it an audible voice? How are you hearing this? You <laughs> well, know, the, the the skies part, um, <laughs> and the stairs come down, and someone delivers me a note. No, um, it's it's really just um, uh, me praying. You know, I, I'm praying, and and sometimes, um, literally, a word will just kind of uh, definitely Snapchat. Um, God doesn't really use Snapchat; he uses something <laughs> else. Um, but uh, it, it's you know, it's. I'll get a word just kind of in my mind. And then that word will be um, uh, re reconfirmed through random stuff like music or conversations or, or things you um, read or things I read. Yeah. And there's like terms or, or words or a phrase or, or even a theme that becomes so, um, so present that I can't ignore it. Um, so that, that's really the way God speaks to me. Um, I have other friends that, you know, they have crazy visions and all this other stuff. Um, I've had visions, but th that's not really necessarily the, the cadence of the way he speaks to me. Um, so it's not, it's not some crazy, like, like, oh, you know, God's like this audible voice. It's like, I'll, I'll see a word. I'm very visual, obviously. Uh, I'll see a word, or, or I'll um, ex or I'll be reading something, and this word will just kind of like pop off the page to me, and I'll be struck in my spirit. And that's really the way they, I, I'll, I'll, I'll have, kind of, um, I'll, I'll get my my words from from the Lord, or or I'll get my directives. Okay, so I want to ask about fasting again. This may be for some of you who are like, we don't, whatever. Okay, this is some woo woo starting the thing, but. <laughs> Um, fasting is not just like, oh, I'm going to get an awesome body. Um, <laughs> it, it's about focus, right? And when yeah. you are hungry, you then are seeking him. And so it's this, or this is how I think I've only fasted one time. Yeah. Um, tell us why, what, what fasting does, uh, in general, and then maybe how it presents itself to you. Sure. Um, so fasting is is really just another way of of turning off one sense so that other senses can be um, more uh, ready, you know, and 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 maybe even strengthened. So um, a very typical example is uh, a blind person may hear better than someone who can see and and hear, right? Or um, a deaf person may perceive things with their eyes a lot better because they're they're the that that kind of that sense has kind of been turned off. So, with fasting, what we're what I'm doing um, specifically is um, I'm I'm denying I'm denying my 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 body to my food and and sustenance so that my spirit. And my mind can be sharper so that I can focus more on, on hearing from the Lord and, and pressing into the spirit. I'm also um, really focused on writing in this time and, and um, 
uh, reading and, and kind of, so my, my mind becomes like almost supercharged when I'm like denying, uh, food from myself because, um, when you, I don't know if anybody's fasted out there and maybe you could put in the chat if, if you've ever fasted more than a day, uh, the longest I've fasted is 35 days. Whoa. And that was, that was, uh, that was actually only water. Um, and so that was, that was a crazy experience, but what happens is like, it, it almost like, uh, intensifies everything else in your life. After three days, you stop being hungry, by the way. Um, it, it really intensifies everything else in your life. You can see clearer. You can, you can, um, your, your mind is hyper alert. You're very, very aware of what's happening around you. Uh, your touch, your feel, everything, everything else in your life, like becomes like the volume becomes cranked up, uh, which is intense. So, um, as you, as you deny that you focus on everything else in your life that you actually really want to focus on. So you're just kind of like denying the body so that the spirit will be awakened or, or, or your, um, your mind can be turned on even, even more radically. Um, so it, it's just, it's just, you know, turning something off. So other things can be more intensified, which is where I want things to be. And, the reason that a lot of Christians will do this um, is because Jesus did it, right? And Daniel did it. There's lots of people who did different kinds of fasts, but if you're, if we um, are, I don't know, replicating, we're trying to be more like Jesus. Sometimes when we are being to focus, when um, those are why, just to give it not like it's just a focusing thing, but it could be for somebody who doesn't believe in God or Jesus, then they can just fast and get the focus that you're talking about. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a biblical practice. Uh, it's definitely a spiritual practice. Um, so if, if that's your background then you know, I would, I would try it and, and really it's for me to, to be, um, more in tune with what God's speaking to me. Um, but other people, non, non-Christian people fast all the time. There's, you know, Mideastern religions that fast all the time. It's the same thing, but it's like, you're, you're denying your, your body, um, something that's very, very needed, right? Your, your, your food, your sustenance in order so that everything else can be really intensified and, and focused on. And D um, does give a good point. Maybe you should check with your doctor before doing yeah, that yeah, too. Sure. Absolutely. We are not doctors or lawyers here. Um, we're just telling you what. Uh, and there's, there's, there's different ways to fast too. You know, uh, you've heard of social media fast and other things like that. Um, it, it's really about uh, denying one thing from your life so that other things can be more focused on. Um, so if you, if you think about it that way, then it's just like turning something off so that everything else can be um, more intensified. Right. And people do that during Lent. Um, sometimes they'll give up something for that amount of time. And it's as a, or one of the re things that I've thought about with this um, is that it, helps you to when you're thinking, oh, because John, uh, my husband, John is a uh, Catholic. And so he always doesn't eat meat. Well, we try. I forget sometimes because I'm not Catholic, but um, he tries not to eat meat on Fridays during the Lent season. And it is that again, that you're able to remember the sacrifice that was made, which is really small if you're like giving up chocolate compared to what we think that was given up for us. So anyway, just to kind of give, I just in case somebody was like, I don't know what the heck they're talking about. I just wanted to clear that up a little bit. Did you want to say anything else about fasting? No, I mean, it, it's really about like, you know, um, you know, Jen put something in there that, that how, you know, she's read that it's detrimental to women's health. And I don't know if that's true or not. Um, maybe in some instances it, it may be. Um, I've never heard that before. Um, I've only heard, I, I really, really am in tune to like high performance, um, doctors. And, and so everybody's talking, everybody talks about like how, um, gradated fasting is actually really good for you. And you're not supposed to be like, you're not actually, it actually allows your, your gut to, to rest and things like that. But that that's more talking about like, like a daily longer fast and intermittent fasting and things like that. So, right. um, and Intermittent fasting is different. That's the way of eating. Yeah, that's totally right? different. Uh, but it, um, but it is 
we I believe you, Jen. <laughs> She's going to put a book over there in a minute with a link, probably. But that's good. I, but I yeah, think we should so always be um, searching something. If you're interested in something, you should search it out before you just jump on in and check with your doctor. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, again, like I, I always preface anything that I, I, I say with this is what I do and this is what I've done. And if this is not something you do or you've done, then definitely if, if it's something that you feel might be medically, um, medically an issue, like Jenna was saying that she has a, a metabolic issue already, then, you know, definitely you have to check with your doctor about all that stuff. I don't have those issues. And this is something, this is a practice that I've had in my life. So it's not something that, that affects me negatively like that. Um, so just always, always check with your doctor. If it's something that you feel might, might be, might hurt you or harm you, you know, and, and again, there's multitude of ways to fast. Like you know, the social to, media fast could be not food, fast full right? food. It's- you could fast a, a certain type of food. Like you're not going to die if you don't eat bread, right? Or you don't eat, you know, if you don't drink Diet Dr. Pepper, Dan, what? for for a year, you know, you're not going to die. In fact, you probably get better. Your 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 brain function might get better. So anyway, um, there's there's just you know, it's just about abstaining from something, um, which is the loose definition of fasting. Okay, right? so as you had you in December, you reflected on. Um, what your last year was. So I asked in the questions, uh, if you had to summarize 2022 with a single word or phrase, what would that have been? Uh, that would have been challenging. Okay. Uh, that, that phrase or, or word. Yes. And th- so then you started on the fifth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, you then the ninth. So Monday was your first day of eating back. Uh, I, I did f- Four full days, so fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, yeah, and then um, the evening of the eighth or the midday of the eighth, I, I started eating again. So I was like three and a half for four days. I don't remember. Okay, so then in that, did you feel like you got a word? Um, I I more than got a word. I got um, I got confirmation of a word that he had already given me almost. Um, so I was. Uh, this is the way this year went. It doesn't always, it doesn't always happen this way, obviously, but um, uh, I was driving, literally driving down the, driving down the road. I was like, all right, Lord, like, what do you want me to focus on this year? Or what, what, give me a word or give me, give me something to, to really push into this year. And he told me that last year was about preparation and which is, which really mirrors the word that he told me to like, kind of restore those foundation and kind of get set on my foundation. And this year was about action. And so as I, as I heard that, um, I had two conversations the following two days where two people told me that same exact phrase for themselves. So in that it was God just reaffirming and it's like, Hey, this is for you too. This is for you too. They told me, and so I was like, yeah, I just really feel like last year was about preparation. This year is about action. Like they said the exact same thing to me um, in two different conversations. So during the fast, I was like, all right, Lord, this is about action. Where do you want me to focus? And so he told me some things there. Um, but this year, yeah, the, the word for this year, or the, the theme is, is really action and, and doing really is the, is the main theme for this year. Okay. So action and doing. So I know some things because I meet with you lots and uh, I know things that you're going to be doing. And um, I don't ever think of you as somebody scared to do the things, somebody scared to take action. I actually think of you as an action person. Um, But I know that there have been certain things that I've bugged you about. And I'm like, hey, you should do this. You should do this. (laughs) You should do this. And I guess uh, maybe you need a little bit more Diet Dr. Pepper or something. Um, maybe, maybe. <laughs> so do you think that, um, do you think of yourself as an action person? I do. Um, but I think like anyone else, there's always the things that um, that do strike fear in us or, um, or things that I'm, I easily take action on. You may not, 
be able right. to, or, you know, Jen or Amy or, or someone else or Barry, like uh, just because, just because I, I feel like I'm very action oriented and I, I do things I like, I'm, if I hear something and I hear like, okay, we're supposed to do this. I'll literally start doing it that moment. Um, but there's this other side where, um, you know, I suffer from imposter syndrome, like everybody else. Right. So when I'm putting out something of my own, my own thoughts, my, and it's something that I want to invite people to either purchase or take part in or whatever. Um, that's when things start kind of like, that's when my fear kind of monster kind of comes out. And, and so in that, um, that's where, that's where this year is going to be really interesting because I'm, I'm, I've already like last year was preparation for a lot of things. I'm already setting up to release a lot of things this year, um, of my own that are that not that they strike fear in me, but it's like, it's like a little, a little nerve wracking, you know, it's like, I'm putting things of my own out into the world. And it's been a long time since I've actually done that. Well, you did mindset reboot. That was, you put things out in the world. But it is, it's, but that was solely you. Right. I'm just reminding right. you, you've done some things. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I'll put stuff out. Like I, you know, I've put out a bunch of content and I've, there's, there's always things that um, I'm, I'm, I feel free to put out and things that I don't really worry about when I, when I put things out like content. Um, but then there's things like, you know, writing a book or, um, or creating a product for people to, to purchase or um, creating a course for people to take. So there's, there's things that um, for whatever reason are, are mixed into my, um, my almost, I don't really have a lot, but my social anxiety, right. My anxiety that, that, you know, do, are people going to want to do it? Do, is it going to be good? Is it like all these questions that we ask ourselves about right. when we're, when we're putting things out in the world. So it's good to know that you're human. I, I just <laughs> want to know am, you to know the that the humanist so. of human. So um, well, you've kind of already discussed how this year is going to be different um, just by simply putting different things out. Um, it's been preparatory. I also just want to say like when we say somebody is in an exploratory phase, um, that's great. You don't always have to be in an action phase. Um or uh, release, I feel like there's some pressure. There has been pressure on me, at least for that, that self-induced pressure to always be in that releasing or launching or mm. something. And so sometimes I feel like there's an exploring phase. There's a preparing phase for that thing that you're, you know, and, and then that sifting, you know, like you tell me all the time, I can't do every, everything. You're like my mom. She tells me that too. <laughs> she says, I'm not superwoman. It, but I can't, I'm not really able to really focus on a ton of different things and put the kind of time and energy into those. So I feel like if I look back, I can see maybe a different word for last year for myself that I know that I would like to focus on a different um, way this year. But I think some of that is that sifting. So it's the pruning, it's the, your, you know, Grape tree will tree. It's a vine, whatever. Let's go to blueberry bushes. I have those blueberry bushes will be more productive if you do trim the dead stuff off. Right. Or trim the stuff that's only producing leaves and not producing any fruit. So it's not bad to not be. It's it's just fine to be in in exploring. It's fine to be in a growth period. It's fine to be. It's just, I guess I sometimes feel the pressure from social media or from mm -hmm. just other businesses to always be in that launch or that, um, I don't know, there's, do you know what I'm talking about? Can you just say the word? I think so. Um, I'm going to just back you up one second. And, and I, I, I got this analogy this last week and I was, I was on this like mini retreat while I was fasting. And, um, we were on this farm and, and the, one of the lessons was around this, this cherry tree and, um, this, this tree, um, has this like, uh, they're acerola cherries. They're like different types of cherries. 
<clears throat> and um, when he first got to the farm, the, the guy who, who oversees it, uh, he noticed that this tree was full of flowers. It was like flowering all of this. So there, it was definitely blooming, right? But then he saw the fruit and the fruit was very, very tiny, dry, and it wasn't good. And so he asked one of his farming friends, because he, he, he was new to the farm. He didn't, hadn't really known how to farm, he, but he, was, he rose his hand. He's like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll oversee it. And his farmer, farmer friend says that you have, to, you have to cut back the bush really, really intensely. So he did. He, 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 he pruned it way back. And then the next year when it flowered, it flowered, um, it flowered a lot, but there weren't as many branches. And when it flowered this time, the fruit became like three to four times the size and they were really sweet. And so um, he was like, oh, great. And then the next year he forgot to prune it again. And it went back to the original kind of small type of fruit. And the reason was because um, the, the tree will flower. It, will, it wants to produce fruit, but the amount of water that is, it's able to pull into its roots cannot sustain all the fruit that it's trying to fruit, right? So there has to be a constant pruning even in our lives. So you talk about like um, wanting to be better at, you know, or creating or, or feeling this pressure to create all the time. And the thing is like, it's all a perspective shift. We are creators. So we're technically creating all the time. You don't have to be in this launching phase like a Chris Doe where he's constantly, it seems like he's just constantly launching new things and new courses. And you, have to, you, you can't, remember, can't forget that Chris has like 20 people working for him. And he's been doing this type of thing for many years. And so he's in this rhythm. He's in this machine rhythm that he's just like, it's, it seems like unstoppable because he's been doing it for so long and he's so efficient at it. So you have to find your rhythm. Mm -hmm. What's your rhythm? What's your, where, where are you? You know, this is 11 years, Diane. I don't know. I, don't, I honestly don't know anybody who's been doing a podcast for 11 years. Chris hasn't been doing a podcast for 11 years. I think Debbie Millman, she got, she has me beat by like, I don't know how many years she's probably, yeah, already, she's yeah. been doing it. She's probably been doing it for, I think she's been doing it for over 20 years. Right. Uh, Design matters. It's, yeah. it's, but, but still in that, in that sense, right. The, the thing, the thing is like, we have to remember, like we are not anyone else. You have to own who you are. You have to push into who you are and how you do things. But then also remember to learn how to take advantage of all the stuff that you're creating. If you feel like, oh, I, I don't know if I could create all this stuff or I don't have to put out, I don't, I, I don't know if I can launch all this stuff. Well, the thing is like you are creating things. How can you invite people into that to, to showcase that instead of just hiding it on your art table or hiding it in your journal or hiding it on the, like you've, you've begun to do this in the last like half, maybe three quarters of the year where you're actually just showing your sketches and you're showing it. And people are like, people are like responding in a new way. It's actually started you to do new things to prompt creativity for people to engage in purchase things that you've made just so that they can be inspired the same way. Right. And it's, it, it's, it's all a perspective shift. Where are you at? Who are you? What are you doing? And how do you operate? And how can you take advantage of that more so that you can share it with other people so that they can benefit from it? Right. One thing you, me and you talked about last week was um, I it gave you some things that I thought I could do and focus on. And you're like, whoa, <laughs> which I love you for. And that's one reason I love to have you in my life and that regard because you will kind of hold a mirror up to me and sometimes it's a little mirror and sometimes it's a wicked big mirror right but i think that it's just really important for in the reflection phase which i'm not super good at i'm working on but to one thing that was a a lie that i was telling myself was that nobody that's a designer right or the business creative entrepreneur, um, a writer like Brandy or whatever, they're running a business. They don't want to see my crafty little things, right? Like that was the lie 
yeah. that I was telling myself. And so then I I had this whole thing with the summer and where I poured into art and I um I even think, you know, like just meeting with me more people and um doing I have a little I don't know, a text group with a couple of people and um and we just share art every day that we've made, right? And just little things like that and I've done 100 day projects or 30 day projects of just sketching that I don't even share on the internet, right? They're just for me and I share it with those people in that group. But I I really felt like that wasn't something worthy and um worthy of your time for me to talk about on the podcast or whatever. And so for me when Mario kind of put pushed back and I was looking at things I had my friend Sandy Hester on um, it was like, I couldn't have imagined that episode to have had as many views. And to be honest, I don't, I, I don't look at the numbers and maybe that's a problem, but I also feel like, you know, if I'm helping one person, that's good enough for me. Um, if none of y'all showed up, I would be super sad. Um, if oh, it was just me and Mario talking or just me, you know, some days when it's just me, I know my mom wasn't going to be here because she's playing bridge today. So I couldn't even count on my mom. Right. But it, it really matters. And I'm thinking, I'm like, I know everybody. I mean, I know everybody in this. I have had conversations with everybody and some people I've hugged in person. Right. Um, and except Amy Darling, so darling. So I will be emailing you to have a conversation, Amy. Um, please don't forget that it's right. My real email. I'm actually asking you to have a conversation with anyway, you can still say no and just forget the email. But what I realized with the Sandy episode was that maybe I could show some of those things that really light me up that maybe aren't, I can't really see the connection. I know I use it in my design practice um, and I can make a bridge, I think for my students or for y'all about how it's relevant, but I, it gave me hope that I, and like a ignited something go for me with the, um, igniting but it it was something that was like oh maybe i could do this and maybe people wouldn't reject me i know that's like really but that's always my my fear of is that it's not helping anybody i'm i'm wasting y'all's time you're just showing up because you feel bad for me i you just have it on mute but you know i'll be have my feelings hurt or something like i don't know if anybody else is like that but that's those are things that I have told myself in the past. And I I am just so thankful that you give me an hour or more of your time on Wednesdays. So in that, so I am pouring into doing some of the things that have always ignited me, but I felt like they weren't worthy, that word. They weren't worthy of your time or your, um, they weren't professional enough to share, I guess. You know, so this is me being pretty, raw and real with you. Um, okay. The end for, do you have anything to say? Well, I, I want, I want you to, I want you to kind of talk about like what, what I told you about that, right. Was like, if, if it's helping you, then why wouldn't you think it could help one other person? Right. And again, we, we need to reframe what we're, what we're thinking about what we're doing. Right. I'm, you have to, you have to look at it from a, you have to take yourself off of like the table, right. And kind of like pull back and say, okay, what is it that I'm doing? Right. And, and, and I'm, I'm doing art to inspire creativity in a different way. How can that not help me as a creative? Yeah. Right? So, when, so when we talk about, so when we talk about what we do in a, in a larger, larger context, then you start to understand it's like, oh, actually that that's, that's how it can help Amy or Jen or D or like, this, that's how, that's how this can help. Cause it's, they're going to, they're going to, they may do the same exercise, but it's going to hit them differently. It's going yeah. to, it's going to inspire them differently. Y you're not trying to sell like, like, oh, if you do A, B and C, then D, E, F is going to happen. It's like, no, it's like, this is, this is what I'm doing. And it's, it's inspiring this in me. If you try it, I'm curious to know what it'll inspire in you. And now you're inviting them into a place where, where, where they're experiencing too. It's like, you know, why would we, why would we hold 
and you're, you're really big on this. Like, why would we hold back all the things that we're discovering from mm-hmm. any of our, you know, your million and a half friends that you have, right? Why would we hold back the things that I'm discovering that, that that's helping me um, from anybody because I want to help them too. I want to, I want to know that they're, they're, you know, they're being helped. And, and you know what, if I share this, they may share something that they've done that would help me too. Like, so now we're just opening a dialogue by, by doing fun things that we really love to do. Everything's going to be, everything that we do is beneficial to build ourselves a better mindset, a better creativity practice, a better design suit, like everything that we do will help myself and help others. And anything that you shared with me and I put in practice will help me and anything I do will help you. And so there's this like, there's this relationship that we start to breed when we think about the things that we're doing and we take ourselves out of that context, because the most selfish thing we can do is hold it for ourselves. And I know you're not selfish. Right. So that's something I struggle with. And I don't know if uh, maybe Jen Close, you can uh, attest to this as well, because I think you probably would sh- struggle with this. Me and you have had conversation. That's why I'm saying that. But um, it is, I um, worry about it, me taking too much of the time when somebody else has something to say or, um, and I do want to share the stage. It's not it at all, uh, but but I have to a detriment fallen back Um when maybe I should have um, taken a step of action and done something, whether it was a series or whether it was um, teaching a workshop. Uh, Brandy and I were talking about this earlier and that sometimes I can come across as apprehensive in my confidence in a workshop because I, I uh, maybe it goes back to worthy or that I, um, that, it's that lack of me thinking that I'm not enough or, and I'm again, taking up too much space. So it's just, it's something that I'm working with. There are certain things that I'm like, I have no problem taking up space um, and, and doing certain things. One, because I've done them a long time. So practice, I brush my teeth. I have no problems brushing my teeth every day. Right. But there are some, and, and teaching at, at the university, I have no problem taking up space, kicking ass, you know, like if not really, real butts, but you know what I mean? Like holding the line for students, but then there are certain things. And with clients, I feel like I've, I can hold the line and I can, you know, tell them no, or I can say, Hey, I can't do this, or I can do this, or what you're doing is crazy. If, you know, give them some other, there's certain things, but I think it's had to do with practice, but there is some things that I think uh, my sister doesn't struggle with the same things I struggle with. And sometimes I think that that is like so weird because we were brought up in the same house and she's just three and a half years older than me. And, you know, and I know she had a different experience, but I, I'm like, she's like, yeah, I struggled with that for a couple of years. You'll get over it. And I'm like, no, I've been struggling with this for 20 years, Vicki, you know, like, how did you get over this? Or, and I see people in the creative space have struggling with certain things, maybe for longer than, um, other, um, Anyway, I don't know what I was saying about that. Blah blah blah. <laughs> That's when it's your turn to talk. Well, you, you you mentioned something about like you know how some people see that you might have a lack of confidence in certain things when you're teaching, and I was luckily lucky enough to be in the room when you were teaching a a a, a little workshop this this year, this last year, um, and what happens is one of the main things that happened when I first reached out to you and I said, stop self-deprecating and you continue to do that. And what, what happens is you, you're saying, Hey, check out this really, really cool thing. It does all this stuff for me, blah, blah, blah. It may not do that for you, but, and it seems like a, a small little thing, but you basically negate everything that you've just said. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the problem with that is um, you, what you tell me when you say, when you do that, is that it didn't actually really help you. Oh. And it's actually not doing what you say it did. And it's not really as impactful as you say it is because you're just adding a, but 
And every time you add a but, you destroy everything before that you said. So for you, like, and, and this happens to everybody, you know, this is, this is, this is something that many people struggle with what you need to, what we need to like really kind of hone into is like really owning that, Hey, this is what's helped me. Maybe it will help you too. Mm-hmm. And then stop talking or continue to push into that point instead of saying, Hey, this is what's helped me. It may not help you. It sounds like I said the same thing, but one, one, says, Hey, try this. It might help you. And the other one says, don't worry about trying this because it's not going to help you. Right. Well, I think it has to do, goes back to one of my um, things that I'm most fearful of is that rejection. And I mean, I don't really feel like I've even been rejected that much, like it, but I'm super good at not getting rejected, I guess, but it comes into the play and I hear you I haven't heard you tell me recently, so I'm glad you just told me now, but not, but I will do that. I am going to try that. Um, Anyway, I did want to talk about content creation portion and one thing. So um, Mario is amazing at content creation and helping people with content creation. And this week I created a video for my students. I didn't include this in the thing, but sort of, I guess it's going to wrap us into content creation. Okay. Um, and I put it out there and I just made it a graphic like I would make any other of my graphics, you know, something for Instagram, something for uh, Instagram stories or reels or whatever or stories. It's just a flat graphic. And then my YouTube thing. And I don't spend a ton of time in the editing and making the whatever. I mean, I didn't even do my hair like it's pretty rough hair. You know, I don't have hair like Mario. So I. Um, I put it out there and I made a post or something and, and, or maybe I, I don't remember what I did, but Mario, which I love that you did this. You said, here's what I want you to do. You said, you need to make a reel, just do a voice over or talk to me in the camera of this. And I didn't have time to do all that, except I did do the voiceover of just the things he said, it looked like an ad. And I was like, okay, well, see, I need feedback like that. And maybe y'all need feedback like that too. Like that's what we're here for. That's what this, this, um, you know, this design community, this creative community helps me with. But I love that somebody like Mario will tell me he can see it. He sees what I posted. And instead of just saying, oh, that's great. He's like, this looks like an ad, Diane. This is a video you want people to go to to help them. And he said the exact same thing that he's just said today about um, this helped me. Maybe this will help. Nope. No, no, I'm not. Is that what I'm supposed to say? I need to. I need to uh, memorize that and practice that. Yeah, this is, this it'll, is maybe it'll help it to you too. Maybe, maybe it'll help you too. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Because I didn't know for so long, even making websites, I was just putting as, you know, small images, but maybe they weren't 500K, which that's pretty much the video. Your images need to be under 500K so that your site loads faster. And that was small, but it was like, this is a small thing that even if you're on Squarespace or you're not a web designer, you still have to upload images. So this can, compressing your images will help your site load faster. But I love that you called me out. You said, Hey, and then I re-recorded. I mean, I put it out again with the voiceover anyway, back to you. So, (laughs) um, you, why does content creation just, it's something that you do effortlessly like your hair. It's, it, I, I don't think it's effortless. Um, in fact, right now I'm like, I'm, I'm in this place where I'm like, how do I do content again? Like I, I'm, I'm actually getting to a place cause I haven't, I haven't done, I've been helping other people do content. Right. But I haven't for myself been in a cadence and a rhythm that is constantly putting out content. Now I know that when I do it for more than 10, 15 days in a row, then everything starts flowing again because I've done it so much, but um, I've been helping so many other people develop their content that I'm, I'm almost in this place. like, what am I talking about again? 
how do I get, how, how do I help people right now? What do they need help with? And so I'm in this place where I'm like, I'm like trying to figure out like, what am I supposed to share? Um, and, and so it's not necessarily effortless, but, but there are practices that can help. Right. And it's, it kind of goes back to the beginning. I was like, just, just share what you're doing. It doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be this, um, this, 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 um, whatever this, this whole, um, performance, right. It doesn't have to be a performance. You don't just stand there and look at stuff. That's so ridiculous. Just be yourself and be who you are. I have a friend in, in LA that, 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 um, I work with and, and he put out a, he put out a reel and I, I, I mess, I sent him the same thing. I was, I was like, is this you, are you going to be doing this kind of like sitcom kind of, kind of real thing all the time? He's like, oh, I'm just trying stuff out. And I was like, well, just make sure that when you try stuff out, that it really resonates with you and your brand and, and you as your personality. And if it does, cool, go for it and go all out. But if it doesn't, you're going to you're gonna really develop a, a secondary persona that you're going to find really um, wearisome to, to, mm. to continue in, right? So as far as content, find out, what it is you love to do, find it, find out what it is you feel people are challenged by and just share how you, how you help that or how you've overcome that or what your method is for combating that or whatever. Or if it's just a how-to thing, like, like all your creative stuff, it's like, Hey, look at, I'm drawing every day. Check this out. This is day one. This is day two. This is day three. This is day four. Right. That's why Inktober is so, you know, popular and all these other 30 day, hundred day challenges because people are doing the same thing, but different because they're doing their own thing every day alongside each other for a, a certain amount of days. And so you've done this many times, right? So that's content. I think when we, we think of content, we're like, oh, I have to, I have to put on a show now and I have to become this person and I have to do this thing. And, and like Chris Doe doesn't do like that. And I'm bald. I have to look like Chris or I have to, I have to, I have to look like, I have to look like Janda or, or any other, you know, or, or Danny page, like, like, you know, these are all friends of mine, but you know, we we're like, I, my, my inclination is to, to find somebody doing something that I like and then replicating that. And that just makes me a really terrible bastardized version of that person instead of just being myself. And I think that's where people find struggles. Like, well, if I'm myself, and this is you, we've talked about, you've talked about this a lot. Well, if I'm myself, then I'm afraid people won't actually like me. Right. And then that's where content really like, like, well, now I don't want to put anything out, but that's ridiculous because you yourself in your, in your heart, you just want to help people. So why would you not want to put content out being yourself? Because yourself is just inviting people into a place where you can actually help them. Yeah. So just step into who you are and document and share and, and see what happens. Like just experiment and see it as a test. So one thing else you've helped me with content is thinking about that. I don't have to cover everything, but it is kind of nice to give people um, little books of content that are connected to each other. So um, content pillars, is it important for people? I think it's hard for, for me to have not, if I, if you were like Diane, one, one content pillar, uh, uh, like the count on Sesame Street. Sesame anyway, Street. Um, but if, but I, you, we're like, oh, there's three, there's things kind of fall in, in three of the content pillars. It, what would you tell people? Is it, and we talked about this last week when we were talking about the Sandy episode and uh, Mario said, do you know why people like Sandy? And I was like, cause she's funny and cute and she does all this <laughs> stuff. And he's like, no, cause she chose one thing painting. But when I think about Sandy, she doesn't just, just do painting. She's doing all the sketching, but she's sharing her process, the good and the bad and the ugly and the um, awkward stuff. She's sharing all that. Now, sometimes she'll do something with her clothes, but she's still a creative and she's just sharing what she likes to paint in and where she goes and gets these painting clothes and things like that. So as a watcher, as a consumer, I um, 
and just enjoy the insight, the behind the scenes. So that's where I don't really um, try to put on a show. That's quite clear and obvious, but I have edited myself a lot in the past um, for some of the reasons that we've already talked about. Content pillars. What would you tell or how would you take somebody through or should somebody do an exercise to try to find what content they need to be? You So if we're talking about content and we're talking about putting stuff out and being known for something, really, I think you, you should get to an exercise where like I call them content pillars. Um, and uh, it, it's really about like, what are the three to five maximum things you're going to talk about? And if you look at any influencer or any any well-known um, person out there, they talk about three to five or less things. Some people talk about two things and that's it. Talk about two things and they talk about those two things a myriad of different ways, right? So one thing people want to know is like, what are they going to get when they start listening to you, right? For Jen, maybe it's, it's design or um, for, um, you know, for B, it's Diane. eco-friendly packaging. Exactly right. So for Diane, it's it's creativity or um, or making friends with everybody you see or whatever, right? So it's it's really you have to you have to find those three things that you're passionate about that you love doing, that you do often, and that you think can help people in some way, shape, or form, and then just deconstruct those. Right? There's there's a trillion things you can talk about with graphic design. Okay. Are you passionate about uh, three micro things inside of graphic design? Are you, are you a type geek? Are you a layout person? Do you use InDesign for everything? Yes, I do use InDesign for almost everything. So like, what are the three things that you're passionate about? Or what are the three things that you feel you can talk for hours on end about without any preparation, right? Mm. So <clears throat> those, the, those, then you start to like, like really sift down. It's like, okay, I, I love design, but I actually love these three aspects of design. And out of those three aspects, actually, most of my, most of my design aesthetic is based around this thing. And in this thing, I have three to five things I can talk about this thing specifically. So we talk about niching down with, um, with our people that we speak to, we have to niche down into the content that we put out as well. So as specific as we are with our content, um, then you will be known for that thing. And if you're known for that thing that you love to do, then that's, that's pretty amazing. And then you can just put out content about that thing. You can put out courses about that thing. You can, everything can be, can be about the thing that you really love to do, uh, in life. For me, it's, it's, mindset and kind of like changing your mind. It's about personal branding, but, and it's also about brand strategy, but really it's about the mindset of all that stuff. So I, I actually talk about mindset and branding and things like that, but everything goes through this mindset kind of, kind of vortex, right? I talk about branding and brand strategy, but I also talk about the mindset of what it takes to do all that stuff as well. So that, that's kind of where I float as far as like my content. Um, and so it really, it's, it's a great exercise to find out like, what do I want to talk about? What can I talk about? Um, if you want to talk about something that you know nothing about, maybe you shouldn't talk about that right now until you really know everything about that. But there's things that are innate that you know already that you should just, you should just be putting content out about. Yeah. Okay. So um, last question, which is not the last question on my list, but it's the last question because we're out of time. Um, since I consider January mental health month for the podcast, um, what are some ways that we can stay healthy or develop a healthier mindset this year? That is a good question. Um, one thing that you can, you can do for yourself, um, I call it like there's all these pillars talk. We just talked about content pillars. Well, we have personal pillars in our life. What are the three most important things about your life um, that you um, that you hold dear? All right. I, I'll break this down to some of my clients like this. Like we all have some kind of spiritual component, um, whether you believe in God or not. There's a there's a spiritual sense of you, and and that can be lumped into emotional as well or or mental. There's an emotional pillar. There's a mental 
a mindset pillar, and then there's a physical pillar. And you can just look at that and say, okay, where, where, where am I lacking most, right? Where, what, what, what do I need most in these four pillars? Do I need to like connect more with my emotional self? My mental is, is, do I need to inspire my, my mind a little bit more? Do I need to change my mindset a little bit more? Should I focus on that? Is, is my physical health, has my physical health gone to the wayside because I've been so focused on my business? Um, that happened to me last year. So if you, if you have these like running percentages of like, I, this is, this is kind of where I'm at right now. This is, this is hundred percent and I'm at like 10, right. And, and that's bad. So any pillar that is low, then you should just maybe spend some time focusing on that. So when you get in this rhythm and you're like always thinking, checking in on yourself, I call it like silos of self, right? And so when you're not feeling right, you kind of dial SOS and you just like go back into it. And it's like, where, where am I suffering or where am I struggling right now? Is my, is my spirit struggling? Is my emotional state struggling? Is my mental state struggling? Is my, um, is my physical self struggling uh, or am I, have I disregarded my physical health or my emotional health, or my mental health because of something else in my life? Well, then you start to kind of like develop this rhythm of, of making sure that you're, you're giving yourself what you need in each of these pillars that actually develops a much healthier um, kind of rhythm to your life because you're constantly going back and checking in with yourself and saying, Hey, how are you doing self spiritually? emotionally, mentally, physically, like, and if you're not doing so well, maybe let's, let's focus a little bit more on the things that are hurting so that we can, we can feel a little bit better. Uh, our mind becomes clearer. I know this is, I know you asked about a mindset thing, but really it's all about like, if my physical self is, is really feeling bad and I'm eating bad, my mind is not in a great place. 100%. If I'm not doing well spiritually, my mind is not in a good place. If I'm not doing well emotionally, my mind is not in a good place, right? And vice versa. If my mind is in a bad place, um, I could probably work out really hard because my mind is in a really bad place, but emotionally I'm, I'm trashed, right? So it's really a good way to, to, to measure how we're doing in our, in our hearts and ourselves. Um, and then that's a really just, just positive way to kind of keep, you, keep yourself focused and, and help yourself live a, a, a better life, really. Um, hopefully I answered that question. You did. So I guess I lied because I do want you to say what is next. <laughs> um, you did say that you would be launching something. Um, uh, I can't remember if you said it was a book or not, but, um, but and then the, a product. So yeah. how would people um, find out more besides just following you on LinkedIn or Instagram? Uh, find out more about all that stuff. Yeah. All the stuff um, that you're doing this year. All those things are going to be, let's see, two of those things. The I'm, I'm putting out a devotional for, for men uh, this year, and I'm putting out um, a course on how to develop trust. And this is something we've talked about, um, how to develop trust um, in business and in relationships, right? So I'm putting a micro course out about that. And then I'm putting out a devotional, hundred day devotional for men um, that will hopefully be out the first quarter of this year. <clears throat> um, you can follow me on Instagram for that stuff. I'll, I'll be talking about that at some point. Um, the other thing is an actual physical bag, like an actual like wallet type bag uh, that my brother and I are developing. Um, and that has a totally different name. That's going to be going under the, the name Ember Wolves. Um, there's really no Instagram presence for it yet. We're just, we're still developing. So we haven't really figured out like how we're going to start doing all that marketing stuff like that for that. But uh, that will be launching um, this year as well. And um, so, I mean, that's, that's probably basically the, the best way you can, you can sign up for my newsletter. I'll be talking about all that stuff in my newsletter as well on my site. Um, but that's made the best way. xmaker.com. It's made yes. by maker, but it has an X instead of a BY. So just so anybody, if they're, you're listening, it's, you know, I'm going to butcher your last name. Oh, yep. Oh, boogers. Hey, it's I'm just here. in time. Um, well, t just say, so the T H E M A R I O Q U E Z A D A on Instagram and just yes. without the the on LinkedIn, but made by maker, madexmaker.com is 
to sign up for the newsletter and then all the other things are there. Yes. I said Mario's name wrong after like three years. And um, so now I just don't say it anymore. And if you noticed when he introduced himself today, he also did not say his last name. (laughs) Anyway, it's it's too hard to say. (laughs) It's too hard for me to say, Um, guys, thanks for coming. And thanks, Mario, for being honest and open about all those things and how the systems and the practices that you do at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year. And I would love to know what y'all do. You can yeah. always email me um, and then I'll share them with Mario too. Or you can tell me don't share this with Mario and I won't share it with him. But if you email me, it's Diane at creativesignite.com. And if you noticed today, you got an email from Diane at creativesignite.com. So I've made the full switch over huge thing. It's creativesignite.com instead of recharging you. Um, I'm just hoping that all my things work. And by the end of today, I will have fun with blobs available for $10 on the website. That was my big thing that I was going to do. So it's a tiny little book. It's It's a great little book. Fun. Really great. And it has um, different colors. And there's just tiny little bit of text that you don't have to read. Anyway, I have a little video, um, uh, whatever, and then you guys can do it. But look, doesn't that totally look like a guy with a hat? Anyway, I just think they're fun. And then there's a moose on the next page. You know, maybe you don't see a moose, but I see a moose. Anyway, you can turn it around. It's just fun. And maybe it's not Sharpie worthy. You know, I think you'd probably bleed through if you were using Sharpies, but Fun with Blobs, Volume 1, is available later today. Um, If you're listening to it, it'll probably be, oh, available now, um, because I have about a week before I get things published. But thank you guys for coming. Thanks for coming every week. I really appreciate it. And Mario, thank you for being the first of 2023, the year I turned 50. Woo-woo! So um, I will see you guys next week. It's just me. I'm doing a rapid, I guess it's still, it's never rapid slow recharge i don't know um but trickle recharge the tr- yeah uh, i don't know that sounds a little too much like tinkle and i always have a tiny bladder at the end of the show so i don't know what i call it. i'm still calling it a rapid recharge but i'm going to talk about some of the things that um keep me or have kept me um um and mentally ready or hopeful So I will see you guys next week. And then we have a super old friend of mine. And I mean, they're not super old. That sounds like they're like 95. Uh, No, it's just my friend, Brian Perry. He's very tall. And we have hiked the Grand Canyon together when we were, I was 22 or 21 or something. And um, so we've been friends for a long time. And so he has some, uh, he's a great one to end the January mental health a month with so i'm excited i will see you guys next week and mario thank you for doing this as always anytime anytime okay well i'll see y'all next week 